I'll get Lily some time to set up. Amen. Okay, we about to, you good? Yeah. Okay, we live, y'all, on Facebook. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Welcome amen. to my Facebook channel again with us. Amen. 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 Uh, we thank God for, thank you, son. Uh, thank God for them. Amen. 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 Uh, thank God for Lily going live on Facebook. Thank amen. God for Quentin. Um, he's running Zoom and cameras, all right? Amen. So thank God for, for them. Amen. Amen. All right, family. Um, turn with me, if you will, um, to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verses 20 through 22. If you can, can you just stand in reverence of God's word? Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22, reading from the New International Version. Amen. While you're finding that to our Facebook family, please like, love, and share this sermonic moment in which um, we you are partaking in at this time. Amen. Amen. You have it, say amen. 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 Those on Zoom, you have it. Amen. All right. Amen. Okay. Job chapter one, reading from verses 20 through 22. And it reads, family, at this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And all this Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. For those that are in person, can you recite the sermonic prayer? And those that are online, you can say it to yourself. Lord, prepare our hearts. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive your word. To receive your word. And prepare our spiritual hearing. To hear your word. To hear your word. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. To move from illumination. To move from illumination. To transformation. To transformation. To application. To application. Amen. 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 Family, I want to preach from the subject when life doesn't make sense. All right, preach, Pastor. When life doesn't make sense. At times, there will be events, situations, diagnosis, tragedies, and even conditions in our lives that will not make sense. The psalmist, he warned it out loud, family, in Psalm 10 and 1. Lord, why do you stand so far away? And why do you hide when I am in trouble? Family, there are times where we have said, how many of us would agree early in this sermon, my life doesn't make sense. All right, come on, preach. Have you said amen, that? Amen, uh, yeah. uh, this yeah. doesn't make, make sense. sense. Right, yeah. But family, I'm going to give you an ouch moment uh -huh. right here. Um, I want to make it clear, listen to my heart on this, that life will not make sense to us because our lives were not made by us. All right, all right. This is for us to understand. Life will not make sense to us because our lives were not made by us. We're not the architects of our lives. God is the one who have given us life. God is the one who will explain to us in his own time why certain things happen. Family, here it is. Um, the reason why life doesn't make sense to us is because we try to make sense out of everything that happens in our lives. And guess what, family? Truth be told, it will not always work like that. Um, Corey Ten Boom 
Sister Carol, a popular author and Holocaust survivor, wrote, when a train goes through a tunnel, it gets dark. You don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. Yeah, y'all quiet. Uh, Vance Hanberg remarked, God marks across some of our days. Uh, we'll explain later. Family, while God never promised life will be problem free, he did promise to be with us in this life. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said this, he never, never would I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. Psalms 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Family. God was with David in the valley of the shadow of death, Psalms 23. He was with the three Hebrew um, boys in the fiery furnace, Daniel chapter 3. And with Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel chapter 6, God sent the angel to the garden to strengthen Jesus, Luke 22 and 43. Watch this, you all. God is not a disinterested spectator in a our lives. He's neither distant nor disengaged. Family, here it is. He does care about us. Yes, he does. I mean, witness. Amen. I got outside yes, of my he voice. Does. He, does he does care, does care. Yes. Yes, he does. about he loves us. Yes, Lord. us. Family. We've been in Job for a little while, haven't we? And I find it interesting, family, that um, as I was praying, the Lord had me in a holding pattern. And I said, Lord, what, what's really going on? And so as um, Ernie, this week unfold, um, getting bad news about two young boys getting taken away from us in a tragic way, looking on the news, and here is this young lady, she going on vacation, and her friends turned to Judas and just killed her, and all sorts of things is going on, uh, Sister Carol, and I'm like, Lord, what in the world is going on? I need a word for Sunday, and he spoke to me clear as day, life doesn't make sense. Right. And we need to roll up and see about Job. Here it is. Uh, one of the strangest images in the Bible, Malia, is painted in the book of Job. The creator of the universe, God, entertains his audience with Satan. They're discussing ways to, watch this, y'all, punish a virtually perfect guy as they converse in the divine realm. Out of the sight of Job. Family, there's nothing in this story, naturally, that we would like. Family, we would have had some objections, wouldn't we? Object to God conversing with the adversary. Uh-huh. Uh, we feel sometimes, watch this, y'all, that God is just sitting back and just watching everything that's going on. Family, can I tell you something? He is watching, Ernie. But watch this. As he's watching, he's working. Yes, he is. As he's he is. watching, he's working. Yes, and I know you like, Pastor, why God won't stop these things from happening? Why he just won't prevent things from happening? And he simply says this, I'm God. I could do whatever I want to do. And watch this, no matter how hard and evil and heinous it is, it all works out. Hallelujah. For our good. Amen. Amen. I know. Amen. I know. I want to tell all of us in this room, the reason why it's hard for us to accept that idea is because we have been fed poison throughout the years. That God is good and God will do all these things. Yes, he's good, but watch this, y'all. He will allow things to work out for our good. He said that things will come in our lives and it won't make sense. Family, can I tell you something? Please stop wasting time trying to figure out why this doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I know. That was kind of like pastor. Right. Yeah, please stop trying to figure out why this doesn't make sense. Because watch this, family. Even if God explained it to us, we will still have more questions. All right. Land, if he, if he will explain to us why certain things happen, Jackie Scott will still have some questions. So he said, listen, let me do what I'm going to do. Mm. Y'all like this type of preaching already? Ooh, it's time um, right, pastor. Amen. However, family, we're going to see what Job does, Tim, in times where life doesn't make sense. Family, y'all ready? Let's roll. 
God, watch this, he orchestrates all this that happens. Can I give y'all the background? I know um, we, we know about Job, but I never say, um, you know, this is a familiar story because somebody probably heard it but just forgot about the details. Here it is. Job lost everything in the space of one day. Y'all, he lost his cattle, lost his wealth, lost everything, and his ten children died at one time. So now you are bankrupt, and now you got to bury your children, all ten of them, all ten cats you got to go in the ground at one time because of a private meeting between God and the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, Lord. And now, after losing everything, this is the first test. After losing everything, Job says, he shaved his head, and he rent his clothes, family, but I, here's a shot for me right here. He worshiped, and then he started talking. And here it is, family. That, that's the story. Here it is for us. First point, Job looked back to his birth. Job looked back to his birth. Now, family, he said in verse 21, naked came out, came I out of my mother's womb. Now, family, here it is. He's not talking about his mother giving birth to him, but the mother's womb means coming from the ground. Y'all catch that? When he says mother's womb, he's not talking about him coming out of his mother, but he's talking about coming from the ground. Job acknowledges that he is only a steward and that everything in life belongs to God. Can y'all say that with me? Everything in life belongs to God. Everything. everything. Um, he confesses as he looks back that he came in this world, Malia, with nothing. Can I tell y'all something? We're going to come into this world with nothing. How many of y'all came in with something in this world? Come on. Anybody? Okay, we all good. We all came in this world with nothing. Job realized that his family, his fortune and everything was on loan as a gift for God for a season. Family, can I tell y'all something? Y'all quiet. Um, y'all must be listening real good. Amen. We must Amen. learn to live with an open hand to appreciate people and things in our lives. But watch this, y'all. But we should not develop an unhealthy attachment to things and people. Lynn, he tells us, yes, we are to appreciate them, but not get attached to it because he can come back for it whenever he feels like. Mm. Family, we come here with nothing. Family, for a season, the Lord has blessed us with our family and with our friends. So here it is, family. So let's thank God for the time he has given us with one another. Amen. Let's Amen. thank God for the gift of family and friends. Here it is. Let us love our family and friends while we have the time to do so. Lord, amen. 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 Okay, here it is. A home going is not the time for you to start hollering and giving all of this remarks and everything else. No, you should have said that while they were alive. That way you won't be guilty when they close their eyes. We are to make sure that we tell our family and friends how much we appreciate them. Listen, I know how many of us agree. We don't get along with all our family, but we are to make sure that what has to be said is to be said. Here it is, family. It's not on my notes, but a good place to put it. Say, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, say, I'm wrong and all that. Make amends for it. Family, we are to look back as well. And remember memories of the time God has given us with loved ones that now sleeps with our ancestors. Now, family, um, Job looked back to his birth. Watch this, y'all. Now he looks ahead, says Carol, to his own death. Verse 21 again. And naked shall I return. Family, Job understood the reality 
that he will return to Mother Earth. And here are those words for us. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Job is saying, I'm getting ready for the world to come. I'm leaving the temporary to inherit the eternal. Family, I have heard it said, um, you all heard that? That everybody's going to die. Ernie, you heard that? Everybody is going to die. But can I tell y'all something? That's not true. According to scripture, in 1 Thessalonians, it tells us that for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Watch this, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When Jesus returns, there will be people still alive, but raptured up all at the same time. We must be ready to meet the Lord with confidence. God made a way for us to meet him. Here it is. How, Pastor? He made a way by way of Calvary Street. Yeah. But we must believe that Jesus died on Calvary so that whosoever, whosoever, that's everybody, y'all, that will come to him will be saved. Ain't that some good news, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. God has made a way for us to be ready to meet him. Yeah. Family, before we leave this earth, we must give Jesus our hearts. Yes, I know you may say, well, Pastor, Preach, I got to get myself together. Yes. I got all sorts of things to do. Boo, you ain't going to get yourself together. And you really don't want to plan about doing things because you are playing Russian roulette. No, you want to give Jesus your heart. That's right. Amen. Family, we are not to live in fear that death is near. <laughs> uh, but we are to live our lives by faith and be ready when he calls us. Wherever he calls, I'm ready to go. I ain't scared of death. All death is is just transportation to paradise. Listen, I ain't afraid of it. Let's go. My reservations has already been secure. We must give Jesus our heart. Yes. yes, amen. And be amen. an example of Christ amen. before a confused and corrupt world. Watch this, family. We live in a sinful, sick world. That's right. This world, watch this, is not going to be redeemed. The people in it may be redeemed. If we just be an example for them, don't worry about this sick world. God said these things are going to happen, but He did say that we got work to do until He comes back. Yes, come Lord. Back. Yes, Lord. Amen. Um, Amen. Um, Lady Q, I'm, I'm going to say something controversial, um, but catch it. We're going to ride it together. Y'all ready? Yeah. Um, there's some things that Jesus don't know. I know, Pastor, wait a minute. You said there's some things Jesus don't know. Um, I thought you said that he's all knowing, he's all powerful. There are some things he just don't know. Y'all ready? Um, he doesn't know any sinners that he does not love. He doesn't know any sin that he cannot forgive. Right. He does not know any other way that we can be saved but through him. He doesn't know of any better time to be saved than right now. Come on, Pastor. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Family, he's saying, uh, he's looking ahead to his own death. Watch this, y'all. When death happens, we shouldn't get worried or get antsy because, watch this, take a consideration who death came for. If death came for a believer, you might as well throw the best party that you can because they're in a place waiting on us. We're just mad because they beat us there. Amen. Woo! Yeah! I'm just mad because you just left me down here with these jokes. You understand? But I celebrate because you've gone somewhere where we're trying to go. Amen. Boy. may have lost is the one who's lost in Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. 
If they didn't know Jesus, you lost them. Oh, yeah. You you lost them because, watch this, um, they're in a place that you're not going. Yeah. 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 If they didn't give Jesus their life, they're in a place that we're not going. Yeah. But here it is, family. For those of us who have taken flight, don't say I lost them. But here it is. They made a transition. Oh, here it is. They made a transfer. Yeah. Tim, I love this. They made a transfer. They went from earth to eternity. So, so yeah, yeah that, that, that's why believers get happy. You understand? That, that's why we get happy. Yes, we shed tears, and yes, we our hearts is heaven. But boo, let me help you. When you think about where they are, you ought to celebrate the place of no more. No more sickness, no more death, no more of the sin sick world. Everything is perfect. Everything is howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. I'm the type of pastor I'm going to talk about heaven every chance I get. We don't have to wait until we smell carnations and see a casket. We need to talk about heaven because that's where we're going. We might as well talk about the place where we're going. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We ain't in no hurry to get there. But uh, when we get there, come on. When we get there, yeah. Everything. Joe says, and naked shall I return. He says, listen, everything that God has gave me, he done came back and repossessed it. So I might as well not cry over the repossession, but I will celebrate and rejoice because he took it back. Yeah. Naked shall I return. He's saying here, family, there is no priest church that needs to follow me. <laughs> I don't need this whole flimsy house and this clothes and all that. I got a robe. I got a robe. You got a robe. We got crowns waiting on us. Temporary stuff. Y'all, listen, we just stewards. I know we're going to cry, but listen, we are in our crying, family. We might as well get ready for a celebration. Here it is, y'all. Go get some balloons and just like, girl, what you doing? I'm just celebrating my life now and life later. <laughs> well, y'all catch that? I'm celebrating my life now and life later. Because, family, believers don't die. This body dies, but we will live forever more. <laughs> y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all something. I'm listen, I'm like, Lord, uh, where, where, where this message is going? He said, listen, I need you. I heard him. Lady Hugh, he said, I need you to encourage these hearts because they have it. Let them know that life will not make sense because I am the architect and author of the life. All you need to do is trust me by faith and move as I lead him. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, now, family, after he tells us he looked back to his birth, he looked ahead to his own death, but then I know y'all woke up and ready to shout like, Pastor, you, you don't hit the octane level. Here it is. Job looked up in faith. I'm still in verse 21. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Y'all, he looked back at his birth. He looked ahead to his death. Now, Job looked up in faith. Family, I read these verses for years, Ernie. I read, studied it, got notes on it, Mom. But the Lord put a stop sign in this here portion of the verse. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Can y'all help me say that? The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Okay, one more time. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Now, here it is, family. Stop saying. Family, there's something that grabbed me in the preparation time concerning this portion of the verse. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Okay, um, y'all catch it? The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Okay, y'all catch it yet? The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Pastor, why you keep making us say this over and over again? I need y'all to catch it. Here it is. The Lord is on both sides of the equation. Wow. 
He gives, and he's the one who takes away. Family, I know this is going to hurt a little bit. I know it stung you at the beginning, but here it is. Y'all ready for some more? Um, how is it that when the Lord is giving, we shout and we get excited and let everybody know? However, when God takes away, we catch an attitude with God. Come up with all these questions. Lord, where was you at? Why did you do this at this certain time? How is it that we don't question him when he gives? But we sure know we have a whole lot of questions uh, when he takes away. All right, now. Lord, yes, Lord. Okay, can I say that again? Ooh, Lord, help us, Lord, help us. We, we don't have no problem, man. Give it to me, Lord, bless me. Woo! And pass out. But then when he takes away, oh, I ain't coming to church no more. The Lord just ain't kind to me. God is telling us that in the giving and the taking, he is with us on both sides of the earth. And that yes, God is yes, there. Yes, in sickness and health, God is there. In the soul, in the storms and sunshine of life, God is there. Whatever comes in our lives, good or bad, we must hold on to the fact that God is there on both sides of the equation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look back. 
back to his birth, right? Um, he looked ahead to his own death. Are uh, y'all ready for this? He looked up in faith. Oh, y'all ready? Ooh, I know y'all ready. Job looked with them. Job looked with them. Watch this. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. This first test that Job goes through, as we know, that if we keep going with Job, he did say some off the wall things to God. But right now, he didn't say things to uh, charge God foolishly. Watch this. Job refused to allow himself to get bitter. Family, can I give you all that? Don't let life make you bitter. Mm. All right. Don't let the things in life that happen to you make you bitter. Help, Lord, help. How many of us have run into some bitter folks? Just all oh, just bitter and cantankerous. Like, girl, what's wrong with you? You just woke up five minutes ago. <laughs> Job refused to allow himself to get bitter. He refused to sit in it and stew in it. Job refused to let evil get the upper hand and imprison his spirit. Job submitted himself to God for safekeeping. Yes, Job was hurt. Y'all, he was hurt. He was hurt. He felt the loss of his loved ones, family that made a transition. He was grieved over what took place. He even got angry at God for a moment. He was hurting from this transition and pain. All natural emotions. Can, can I pause? It's okay to be emotional. Oh, I thought I had to yeah, go yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's okay to show your feelings. It's okay to express how you feel. But then, family, after that, you need to go back to God and say, help me in all of this. Job rose above his pain and loss by understanding that God... Is still there. Um, William Barclay, he writes this family when his 21 year old child died. He said, and I quote, God didn't prevent the storm that happened, but God did steal the storm within my own heart. Amen. Woo, can I say it again? God didn't prevent the storm that happened, but God did steal the storm within my own heart. Um, when things like this happen, there are three things that ought to be said. And here it is. When life is seems un, uh, doesn't make sense to us, to understand the things that happen in life, here it is, cousin, it's impossible. Mm. Jesus doesn't always offer explanations to why certain things happen. But he does offer strength so that we can handle what we do not understand. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of resentment against God that meets life with a chip on our shoulder, we can go on living, go on working, and find in the presence of Jesus the strength to meet life with steady eyes because we know that God, too, is afflicted by our affliction. Here it is, family. I once heard this. Tears are good because leaky heads don't swell. Right. Ooh. Tears are good because leaky heads don't swell. Here it is, family. We need to cry so that we can release the pressure off of our minds and off of our hearts. Now, I hear Lady Q. I do. I hear you, baby. I hear you. Um, what does this, Pastor, you said life doesn't make sense and Ooh, wait, this has been, this been a journey right here. Come on, let's wrap this on up. I see uh, Virginia with the bow. Here it is. So, Pastor, what do I do when life doesn't make sense? Here it is. Y'all ready? Don't disregard how you feel. Don't disregard how you feel. Job was unhappy. He appeared to be devastated. He, he expressed his hurt. He made no attempt to hide his suffering and his sorrow. Denying sorrow does not have something spiritual about it. Can I say that again? Denying sorrow does not have something spiritual about it. In fact, doing so may anticipate our own feelings of bitterness and damage our ability to bear witness to God's faithfulness. Mm. Second, he tells us, don't stop worshiping God. Don't, don't stop Amen. worshiping God. Family, Job understood 
that we need to communicate with God. Family, we need to keep our lines of communication open with God when life happens to us. Because when we don't have a friend to talk to, family to talk to, the line is always open for us to come and to talk to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job immediately turned to the one who could console him after recognizing his sadness. In his worship, you all, he made it quite obvious that he understood that God is in charge of everything and that he can rely on God. Amen. Family, how many of us on the side of my voice say, you know what, Pastor? I can rely on God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Family, when everything else falls apart and falls to pieces, one thing for sure that will not fall apart or fall to pieces, and that is God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. And can I give you all this shout for free? Here it is. When life falls apart and it goes to pieces, Jack and Scott, he can come along and say, here, I can put something back together. And it'll look more beautiful than it once did. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Family, Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord, for the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. And thirdly, family, here it is. Don't disregard your faith. No. Job decided to respond to tragedy, you all, with faith. Job did not wrong God or commit a sin. Considerably, in the best of circumstances, it can be challenging, family, to live out this life of faith when life happens to us. However, it can become even more challenging when we're surrounded by grief, loss, sadness, and agony. But Job's example shows how to continue to act in accordance with God's will while having faith that he will continue to care for him even during difficult times. And so, family, my word of hope for us today is that in the midst of your hurting, trying to make sense of what has happened in life, it will not make sense because we did not make our lives. And so that should move us closer to say, God, this doesn't make sense to me. So I'm coming to you because you're the one that's the architect behind what's going on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. And family, if he give you an explanation, fine. fine. If he doesn't, it's all good because I still have you. Yep. Amen. Amen. So family, that's the word of God now it is for the people of God. Amen. 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 There may be someone under the sound of my voice, uh, both in person and virtually, who wants to give your life to Jesus Christ. Listen, you don't want to leave this world without saying yes to Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. Perhaps you do know Jesus Christ, but you want to unite with the Bible-believing, Bible-practicing church. Listen, you're the good one. I will say again, you are the great one. Amen. Amen. And we would love to be your family. And I would love to be your pastor. Amen. So if that's your choice on today, amen. You can make it known to us. We we'll gladly take you in. Amen. Discharge a duty to see if none came till Christ returns. There's still room. Amen. 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 Guess what time it is.